गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू बी साइड्स लास्ट वेगस दिस स्टॉक इज फ्रॉम फॉर्म वेयर टू एक्सप्लॉय गिवेन बाई माइकल मैशनर a few announcements before we begin we would like to thank our sponsor especially our diamond sponsor adobe and our gold sponsor prisma cloud blue cat toyota it's with their support that and with other sponsors donors and volunteers that make this event possible these talks are being streamed live and as a courtesy to our speakers and audience we ask that you check to make sure your cell phones are set to silent if you have any questions use the audience mic so that youtube can hear you as well and uh, with that let's get started P please welcome michael thank you very much so uh, hello besides las vegas great to have you all here and great being part of this wonderful event so the next 20 minutes are around uh, real world firmware analysis with amber amber stands for embedded analyzer and is a fully automated security and vulnerability analyzer for firmware of embedded devices and the best thing on amber is It is open source. So right after a talk, you can go straight to a GitHub repo, download Ember, and start analyzing firmware. And at the end, making the Internet of Things a little bit more secure. So my name is Michael Messner. I'm a penetration tester and security researcher at Siemens Energy. And during my daily business, I perform penetration tests on critical systems and environments. And this is the area where we developed Ember and where we are using Ember on a regular basis. But first things first. So in today's environments, everything is now connected. It starts with your private IoT at home, or better, it starts with your IoT on your body. Probably you have a smartwatch. The smartwatch is connected to the smartphone, and the smartphone is connected to the rest of the world. Or you're going to work by car. Your car gets updates over the air, which means over the internet. The traffic lights are connected. Critical infrastructure. highly interconnected if you are working in a big company or in a small company it doesn't matter your it infrastructure um your ot infrastructure ics everything is connected and on the bottom level there are running these little gray boxes you yeah, know they are not always little and not always gray but they are running uh, some operating system on it and this could be in rare cases a full blown linux operating system Uh, in more cases it is a it is a stripped down linux operating system you will find some real time operating systems like vx works or in very rare cases you will also find some windows operating systems um the generic term for these systems is firmware and according to a firmware expert company called eclipsium um firmware is the most exploited category of the over the last few years and If we take a look at the Microsoft Digital Defense report from last year, we will see that they found out that 30% more than 30% of the analyzed firmware has more than 10 known critical vulnerabilities. So, from our perspective, it is time to take a deeper look at firmware security. But how to start? Um in my environment, I typically have the the real device on the on hand. and we are trying to move away from the black box only approach to a more gray boxish an analysis style with firmware analysis with the firmware we are able to understand the inner workings of the device and we are starting with some information gathering like doing strings on the firmware binary or doing some some entropy analysis we are using well known and established extraction frameworks like unblob um we're doing configuration analysis find some files do a lot of research and at the end we try to identify the juicy stuff of the firmware we try to find weaknesses configuration errors and vulnerabilities and to understand the inner working of the firmware all of this takes time and um time is typically the um, the, the limited factor in such a penetration test So Ember think about Ember it is like an an automation framework for firmware analysis so you just need the firmware binary you drop it into Ember Ember extracts it Ember is doing the analysis analysis for you and finally generates a nice and shiny html report but how do we get access to the firmware the easiest way is 
Just go to the vendor website, download the firmware, and you're ready to go. But sometimes the firmware update files are incomplete. Sometimes they are encrypted, or they are just not there or behind the paywall. So you need other mechanisms to access the firmware. Um, one possibility, if you have the device you, and you have shell access to the device, just copy it directly from the device. Or you can probably use other, command, uh, other vulnerabilities like command injection vulnerabilities that you can exploit and get access to the device. Another possibility is getting, getting access via the hardware. You can try to identify debugging ports like UART or JTAG. You can try to sniff the communication between the flash storage and the CPU because the firmware needs to get transferred to the CPU for execution. And finally, the more invasive attacks like desoldering the flash storage and extracting the flash storage then via a, sp a specialized flash reader. At the end, um, you will have access to the firmware. You have the firmware, um, and now you can start analyzing the firmware. And you will have a lot of questions for the firmware. You Just a few examples. Um, where are the binaries? Which binaries? Where are the libraries? Which configuration files are there? Are there configuration mistakes? Which kernel is running on the, on the system? And so on and so on. One of these questions is probably regarding your software inventory. The world speaks around the SBOM. Um, this SBOM or software, software inventory is really interesting from a penetration tester perspective because there are probably some, some vulnerabilities and exploits for free there. So at the end, you need to identify the software components. You need to find the exact version details, and then you're ready to go. You can. Uh, or queries uh, vulnerability databases like the CV database. Then you can query exploit databases and you get probably a one day for free. The goal for every penetration tester is not doing this manually. The goal is that this should happen automatically in the background. And Amber um, has a hybrid approach implemented for doing this. So first, first of all, we are trying to analyze a package management system if it's available on the firmware. We then use static analysis, like we are doing strings on every binary, or we are doing hex dump, or um, query the kernel modules for the, for the exact kernel version. And additionally, we try to run every binary in an emulated environment. We will see it on the next slide. And finally, we also try to run the whole firmware in an emulated environment. We will see this also later on. So regarding the emulation of every binary, Amber runs through all of the binaries, identifies the architecture of the binary, it chooses the right emulator, and then it starts uh, with the trial of every binary to emulate it, to run it in an emulator, with different parameters like minus V, minus capital V, minus minus help, and Amber collects the output that it's generated now. And here you can see an example from BusyBox. BusyBox spits out a lot of output uh, with minus minus help. And in this output, you will also find the version identifier. Uh, we are currently able to detect more than 600 different version identifiers. And um, we collect all of these version identifiers. We aggregate them together. And at the end, we have the software component, we have the um, identified version, and now we can start querying databases like the CVE database. With the CVE database, we get the known vulnerabilities with a rating, the CVSS score. And finally, with the CVE identifier, we can then query further databases like um, the Metasploit database for or quite stable exploits, or the exploit database, exploit DB, or packet storm, or whatever we want. And you get a quite good overview of the real world exploitability of the firmware. And all of this happens in the background, and you're now able to um, focus on the interesting stuff. Mm. So analyze the firmware for fresh exploits, for zero day vulnerabilities. Usually, this is the goal of every penetration tester, to find currently unknown vulnerabilities. 
and you want to spend as much time as possible on this. So um, I will show you a little vulnerability we found ages ago in a, in a home consumer device. It is in the command.php file. The interesting thing now is that the command.php was not interlinked from the web interface. So from a black box approach, there is the risk that you're missing this file and you're missing a, 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 a critical vulnerability. As soon as you have access to the firmware, you can walk through the firmware, you can find all the script files and you can analyze them. And this is quite time consuming again, but Ember can do it also. So Ember can use this, uh, can check all of the PHP files and use SendGrab, for example, to do static, source, uh, static code analysis. And as everything is interlinked on the HTML report, you can just click uh, on, the, on the possible results uh, for your further teardown. And you get direct access to the source code with um, the suspicious area highlighted. And you can see it there that the vulnerability is easy to detect is the CMD parameter is passed to execute function and then it is just executed on the operating system. So, hooray, we have found our first zero day. But Ember can also help you in, not only help, Ember cannot only help you in um, um, <laughs> scripting languages. It can also help you in identifying the juicy stuff on, on binary level. So here you can see a typical output from Ember um, this is from a firmware that was analyzed uh, uh, a while ago from a security researcher. And guess in which binary there were the vulnerabilities? Yes, in the NCC binary. And Amber checks every binary for legacy C functions like string copy. And um, if there are legacy C functions very often used, there is the risk that something goes wrong. And then we are matching this with, with some, other pos uh, some other interesting criteria like um, is the, um, like an educated guess if the binary is a known Linux file or is it, it is not a known Linux file. If not, then it is probably something from a vendor that won't take a look at it. Then it shows the binary protections are the symbols in the binary. And finally, um, is, are the network capabilities in the binary. But now we have a, a, a zero day vulnerability. We have a binary in the next firmware that is quite suspicious. But till today or till now, we do not know if something of these vulnerabilities or possible vulnerabilities is exposed and exploitable. So we thought a while ago, um, how can we improve this now? And we introduced the um, full system emulation framework. And with this framework, we are now able to move away from the static only approach in finding vulnerabilities to a more dynamic approach. So in an ideal world, we can just boot up the device and we can verify our vulnerabilities. We're using a technique that is called, QA, uh, that is called emulation. Um, we're using QEMU for this. And according to Wikipedia, an emulator is hardware or software that enables one computer called the host, which is our, for example, our Kali Linux, um, to behave like another computer called the guest. The guest is the firmware, the embedded device. And we are now trying to execute code or binaries from the guest, from the firmware, on our host system, on our Kali Linux system. At the end, we are trying to boot up the firmware um, on, on a different architecture. With, we, we are dealing with, with a lot of issues there. We have a different architecture, we have a different kernel, for example, and so on and so on. Nevertheless, um, it was 2016 where um, a research project called Fermadyne showed us that it is possible to um, automatically boot up a lot of firmware um, to a state where we can interact over the network in 2020. The uh, successor project, Firma E, um, improved the success rate massively. The problem now is that both projects are not actively maintained anymore. And so we thought about this issue and we decided to do a complete re-implementation as Amber modules. With this re-implementation, we can now um, further maintain our, this um, emulation engine we were able to improve 
this emulation engine in multiple areas, like we can now, we are now supporting more architectures than before. And now it is possible to automatically use this full system mode emulation during our firmware analysis, during our automated firmware analysis. And now let's go back again to our zero day vulnerability that we, that we found out a little bit before. Um, we know that there is a vulnerability, but we do not know if the vulnerability is really exposed and we can exploit it. So now Amber is doing its magic. It is trying to emulate the firmware and it shows us the final emulation state. Uh, it tries to, to ping the, uh, the emulated firmware. It tries to do an NMAP port scan. And if there are web interfaces detected, it shows us a nice and shiny screenshot of the web interface. And we can see that there is a configuration interface probably working because we got a nice and shiny screenshot from it. But um, Amber is doing much more now. Amber is crawling the whole web interface or the web server for the whole firmware, for all of the firmware files. So at the end, we know which files are exposed via the web interface. So we can see that uh, the command PHP file is exposed via the web interface. And now Amber is doing um, um, cross-checking to uh, if there are further results already available. And Amber sees, okay, we have already the, a possible vulnerability um, identified via our static source code analysis. And now you can just, again, click on it, do some manual analysis on there. Additionally, you can now use this for system mode emulation um, to further exploit this vulnerability. You can write your own proof of concept. You can write your exploit for this vulnerability now in emulation without owning the real device. And for this talk, we thought about um, if we should show the exploit development process now in emulation. But on the other hand, we thought, okay, then you can see that it's possible, but we know that it's possible. So probably it would be much more useful to give you the possibility to not just use one exploit or one proof of concept in your firmware analysis in the future, but to use, I think, more than 2,000 exploits in your firmware analysis process in the future. So we integrated the Metasploit framework as one of these analyzer modules for the live, uh, live testing. And now, um, during our firmware analysis process, it is now possible, or Amber is doing again some cross-checking. Um, I've mentioned before that we are doing port scanning on the emulated system. Um, so we can now cross-check against the Metasploit database with the default ports. We are doing cross-checking regarding the operating system. And then, we're using the Metasploit framework in an automated way to first try to check, uh, use the check functionality from every module. And if there is no check functionality available, we are trying to really exploit the vulnerabilities. And you can see it here that uh, the vulnerability, the command.php vulnerability, now was identified and verified with a um, successful exploitation attempt. At the end, you get again a nice and shiny HTML report with all of the vulnerabilities that we were able to verify um, via exploitation. And probably the seasoned security guys here can remember the DB Autopone feature from Metasploit, which was removed uh, years ago. Um, this is more or less DB Autopone for firmware, but in a safe and secure environment because it is in an emulated environment now. So, um, we've shown now that firmware analysis is not only configuration analysis, it is not only generating an S-bomb, it is more a hybrid uh, mechanism. It is static analysis, it is dynamic analysis, and at the end, you get a much better understanding of the real-world risk of the firmware. And um, last week, we have released version 1.3.0 from Amber, and there we introduced a quite interesting, nice uh, new feature, the AI assistant firmware analysis. So from now on, you can also use ChatGPT to get a second, opi uh, second opinion, a second meaning of the, of the possible vulnerabilities. So thank you very much. 
I think. Do we have some questions now? So most of the discussion was on Linux. Does this support analyzing other real-time operating systems or other situations other than embedded Linux? Um, so, so Linux is quite a, uh, a nice target because you can do a lot of anal analysis quite uh, automatically. Um, we also support uh, real-time operating systems, but with a limited um, anal analysis mechanisms. So we, we are able to generate an s form for these real-time operating systems. We are also supporting um, UEFI analysis via um, the FW Hunt Mac, um, um, open source project from Brinerly. Um, so we are trying to also support other operating systems other than Linux, yes. All right, thank you. Excellent work. Yeah, so I'm curious about the dynamic part of the emulation. So if you have firmware for an MCU which is not emulated in QMU, for an example, um, are there any future plans for how you would extend it if it's not possible to emulate it at the current time? Or um, yeah, cur currently, if uh, QAMO is not able to emulate it, then we are definitely failing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if QAMO is uh, able to support these uh, controllers in the future, then uh, there are definitely uh, plans to make it also possibly in Amber. So we are actively maintain the um, firmware emulation mechanism because it is so great and so helpful. Thank you very much. It's a very cool project. Thank you. So I do need to ask, what is the AI assisted edition? <laughs> so, um, um, we can query ChatGPT via the API. So um, currently, we get results from SAMGrab and other static source code analysis tools. And if you enable the AI assistant mechanism, then we upload these files to ChatGPT and ask GPT for an analysis. And uh, the results are quite interesting and quite good. So you get a quite uh, nice uh, second opinion on the vulnerability that uh, are already found via other tools. And in the future, we are planning to um, also include this possibility for not analyze uh, static uh, already found vulnerabilities so that we can extend it massively in the future. Would it do it also with uh, some binary code you showed as a, a string copy or this kind of thing uh, and maybe trying to get the assembly around the function to figure out um, uh, if uh, it's we, somehow vulnerable? We have already, we did some tests on uh, with, the, um, with the decompiler from Radari 2, but the results were not that good. Um, but probably in the future, if the results are getting better, then probably we can also do some, some interesting analysis via, via GPT there. Thank you. That's very cool. You're welcome. Awesome. So um, you talked about uh, binary analysis. Um, what about compressed binaries like UEFI images and stuff? Can you give us more details on that? Um, um, you, you mean what analysis mechanisms we are using for finding interesting stuff? Uh, for uh, binary analysis? Yes. Uh, um, fir first of all, we are, we are counting the usage of legacy C functions. Um, how many times they are, they are used, and this is not by itself a vulnerability, but the more often they are used, uh, the more likely it is that there are some problems um, in there. Um, we, are, we are testing the binaries regarding, um, regarding the binary protections. We are testing the used functions in the binaries. Um, if there are functions used that are, that are uh, indicators for network activity, and um, we, we are doing some further analysis where we, we are generating from every binary uh, the, the whole output via, via the strings command. And we are analyzing this output for private keys, for passwords, and um, some, some other stuff like this. So multiple things that we are doing in the background here.
No more questions? Then I think we are ready to go for lunch. Thank you very much.